For nearly 400 years, children have celebrated the attempt to blow up Parliament by building bonfires. The only man who everybody remembers is, of course, Guy Fawkes. Poor old Guy, with a hole in his stocking and a hole in his shoe, a hole in his hat where the rain comes through. If you haven't got a penny, a halfpenny will do. If you haven't got a halfpenny, then God bless you. But who was Guy Fawkes? And why did he want to blow up Parliament and the King? Every year in November, the monarch comes to the Palace of Westminster to open a new session of Parliament. A glittering crowd of people gather together to hear the Queen make her speech. Here are the bishops, the lords, the judges, and all the members of the House of Commons in the same building at the same time. My lords and members of the House of Commons. It was precisely at this point in the year 1605 that the plotters planned to strike. They'd stored their gunpowder under King James's throne. But at the last moment, the plot was discovered. Remember, remember, the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. The conspirators were all Catholics. They were mainly in their 20s or 30s. Most were country gentlemen. They hated the fact that because they were Catholics, they were persecuted by the government. For example, they were fined for not going to the Protestant churches. The fines were very heavy, and many families faced ruin. So Guy Fawkes and the others decided to plot against the king. King James I of England and VI of Scotland, the man the conspirators planned to kill. When King James first came to the throne, many Catholics hoped that he would be sympathetic to their religion and allow them to worship in peace. But they were disappointed. James wished to get rid of all the Catholic priests called Jesuits. Jesuits were trained abroad in Catholic countries, but the king saw them as little better than foreign spies. If a Jesuit were caught, he would be executed for treason. This is the home of Robert Catesby, the leader of the gunpowder plot. Next door is the parish church, which Catesby was fined for not attending. In 1604, Robert Catesby began gathering a group of Catholic friends and relatives around him. His plan was simple. He intended to kill King James and set up a government which would allow Catholics to worship freely. It is said that the conspirators held meetings in a room over this gatehouse at Ashby St. Ledger in Northamptonshire. Robert Catesby made everyone swear an oath of secrecy. But what else did the conspirators talk about? Who could be trusted to join the plot? Who would put up the money that would be needed? And what about the gunpowder? Above all, could they justify killing so many people? Could they justify killing the king? Remember, remember the 5th of November gunpowder, treason and plot. This drawing shows us what the Palace of Westminster looked like in the time of Guy Fawkes. The only building which still survives is the ancient Westminster Hall. To this great building were brought many criminals and traitors to be put on trial and sentenced to death. This was the House of Commons, where the laws of the land were made. And just a little way away was the House of Lords. This was where King James would open the new session of Parliament. And this was the building the conspirators planned to destroy. 
remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. The conspirators now had a piece of good luck. Underneath the Lord's Chamber was a storeroom which became available for rent. The ideal spot to place their gunpowder. At dead of night, the gunpowder was brought to Westminster by river. Thirty-six barrels, weighing nearly a ton. The conspirator whose job it was to look after the gunpowder was our old friend, Guy Fawkes. As the summer went by, more and more Catholic gentlemen were brought into the plot. Francis Tresham was rich and would provide money. Ambrose Rookwood would supply the horses. John Grant would bring muskets and armor. Everard Digby would organize a rebellion in the Midlands, which would follow the explosion. As more and more people joined the plot, the greater the risk became that someone would betray the conspirators. Just 12 days before Parliament was due to meet, a letter was brought secretly to a nobleman called Lord Monteagle. Monteagle was a Catholic, a brother-in-law of one of the conspirators. He was due to attend the opening of Parliament. My Lord, out of the love I bear some of your friends, I have a care of your preservation. Therefore, I would advise you to find some excuse not to attend this Parliament for God and man have both decided to punish the wickedness of the time. Yet I say they shall receive a terrible blow, this Parliament, and yet they shall not see who hurts them. The letter was unsigned. What did it mean? Lord Monteagle, as this cartoon shows, lived up to his name. He immediately took the letter to Whitehall Palace and showed it to the King. King James had no difficulty working out the puzzle. His father's house had been blown up and his father murdered when he was a boy. He knew all about the dangers of gunpowder. King James's advisers discussed what to do. They decided not to act until the last possible moment. Robert Cecil, James's chief minister, wanted to catch as many conspirators as possible. On the evening of the 4th of November, the conspiracy swung into action. Guy Fawkes was with the gunpowder, making last-minute preparations for setting it off. At 10 p.m., one of the conspirators brought him a watch to time the explosion more accurately. By this time, Robert Catesby and the others had left London and were riding towards the Midlands. Then, at midnight, the government struck. Guy Fawkes was arrested. The gunpowder was discovered. The plot had failed. Immediately, Guy Fawkes was taken to the king, but he wouldn't break his oath of secrecy. He refused to betray his fellow conspirators. King James ordered that Guy Fawkes be taken to the Tower of London and there tortured until he confessed.